Now, the other side of that argument, and we're, we're moving away from the primary questions, but we'll get mm -hmm. back to them okay. uh, because we're, we're on something that I'd, I'd really like to get into. You will hear from the other side. You will most assuredly hear from Frank Pallone. Mm -hmm. What about all of the uninsured people, the uninsured and the underinsured? What do we do about their care? They have to be cared for. There is, um, there is no opportunity, I think, in this country to overlook the most vulnerable members of our society. However, they want choice too. They're equal to every one of us. They should not be subjected to an insurance uh, uh, policy that is dictated to them by the government because of a government handout. They want choice too. And how do you Voucher provide it? it. Voucher it. Okay. Voucher it and let them make the choice. Really, the goal with, with health care is not control. It's to get the best treatment possibilities available in the market. The best qualified doctors, nurses, hospitals, nurse practitioners available to the people of this country, arguably the people of the world. And a free market economy model is the way to accomplish that. Does your stance on this differ from Diane Gucci's that you know of? What's the difference? How I do have we know no the difference? I have no idea what Diane Gucci's stances okay. are. I will have to wait for her to announce them okay. and then I would be able to answer them. Okay, don't I, I'm looking to differentiate yeah. between you as we're in this part Understood. of the process. Understood. Because this is an important part of the process. It's often overlooked. And I think it's a really, uh, you know, we hear a lot of complaints. We don't get good candidates. Well, this is where we find our good candidates. Absolutely. So, um, this I is, can tell you that um, an advantage in this part of the process is you definitely know what my position is on the issue. Okay. Uh, what is your position? I got an, an email today. We all get all these political emails. I got an email today uh, from a bunch of people who were headed to the Middlesex County Convention. Uh, to, and very, very one issue, pro-life. What's your position there? I am pro-life. You are? I'm not, uh, not hesitant about it at all. Um, as a candidate running for office, I'm very truthful about all positions. Okay, and that's it, pro-life period. That's it. Okay, not, not a complicated question, not no, a complicated answer, no. I guess. Um, what are the other big issues, to, to, your, to your view, that have to be wrestled with in, 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 go, in taking the seat, what are the big issues? I mean, obviously health care is something that everybody's talking about. Absolutely. There's a discussion of another stimulus bill. What are the fiscal issues that are... Well, uh, fiscally, I think um, we have a terrible irresponsibility going on in Washington right now. Um, the, the debt and the deficit are out of control. Um, when, in our households, if the money isn't there, you don't spend it, honestly. Um, it should be the same in Washington, D.C. I think our biggest problem in, in Washington right now is we're not referring to, our government is not referring to the Constitution as they develop the laws and as they structure the government. We have a number of federal departments that may not be constitutionally permitted, and now they have regulatory authority, and it's costing us an awful lot of money. It's stifling the economy. The goals and values that are espoused by those departments are valuable, and they should be promoted in a free market economy by the consumer um, through education. I think that um, what, what's going on is out of control. And I think that we can address debt, deficit, and line item spending by taking a look at what's constitutionally permitted by federal government and where the federal government, by a, by a matter of policy, may want to promote some changes uh, on specific um, areas, for example, energy, the environment, which is uh, our hot button issues. They can, they can educate, they can look at uh, federalism in, through the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. They can, uh, we can, as a federal government, encourage states to give incentives. You see, when you offer a reward and ask someone to reach for it, that's positive. When you regulate and, and legislate a punishment, that's a negative. Negative policy is stifling, and positive policy is encouraging. What specifically departments would you say might not be constitutionally permissible? Um, I, I think we don't need the Department of Education. I think school boards do a great job. I think um, parents, teachers, and local school board officials can run the schools. I think what, um, what they don't need is unfunded mandates from the federal government and from the state government. If uh, the federal and state government feels that the Constitution permits them to enter into an area and they want to issue a mandate, they must fund it. 
um, they can otherwise suggest, encourage, and allow the process at the local level to take hold. I believe um, local government is best. All government is local, local. eventually. Okay. Um, and I believe in the area of schools, we need to voucher. Um, we need to allow uh, parents, school boards, and teachers to decide what's going to go on in their school. And I think that all um, children and parents need to be able to make a choice as to what school they want to attend. And that's going to improve the quality of education. It's going to put the focus on what's produced in the classroom. It's going to put the focus on the child, not on the physical plant uh, in the school. Um, and, and I really think the focus in education needs to be on the teacher, not on administration, not on what uh, the building looks like. Okay. Um... Uh, uh, moving to a different part of the uh, part of the, the equation, going back to the primary issues, mm -hmm. uh, someone uh, we're looking for somebody on you know on the Republican side, we're looking for somebody to beat Frank Pallone. And that's the bottom line. Uh -huh. Is who's more likely to beat Frank Pallone? Um, are there battleground municipalities in this? I mean, ultimately, it's sort of a small race. Are there battleground municipalities where you think? you have a better chance than Diane Gooch, or will you think that Diane Gooch might have a better opportunity than you to take to do some damage? I think um, when we get to the general election, I can beat Frank Pallone. I don't think there's a doubt in Frank Pallone's mind that I can beat Frank Pallone. Um, this is a working class district. Uh, I am working middle class. I was born and raised here. I'm living and working here. I'm raising my family here. I'm an elected official in my local town. I've been an elected official at Monmouth County. Incidentally, the population of Monmouth County is roughly equivalent to the population of Congressional District 6. I am Congressional District 6, and I believe I'm the best candidate. The battleground municipalities are in the Bayshore. Okay. My strength, even as a Monmouth County freeholder, was in the Bayshore. When you cross into Middlesex County, you're talking about densely populated um, municipalities that lean Democrat heavily. Um, I am working middle class. I am a linguist. Um, that's going to be helpful in those areas. Uh, and I believe if you go back to family, family values, you talk about vouchers and choice in health care and education, that's the message. And I can best deliver that. Um. I, you're you're making veiled references, I guess, to the fact that Diane Gooch is not actually a resident of of, of the congressional district of CD six. Do you think it's relevant? I think it's relevant to the voter. I think it is legally appropriate for her to do what she's doing. It is possible for someone under federal law to run for federal office in a district where they don't reside and then move into the district if they win. And I believe that's what she intends to do. Uh, there are others in this race and other districts that are doing the same thing. So there's nothing legally inappropriate, but I think to the voter it makes a difference. I think if there's if a voter is given a choice between someone who is their friend and neighbor, someone that has lived and worked where they're living and working, someone who has a similar life experience ongoing um, to their life experience, they're more likely to choose that person than they are to choose someone where there's a difference or, or some kind of a gap. Um, so Three reasons. Why are you a better why are you a better candidate? Why do you deserve the line? Why do you why do you deserve to be the, the candidate against Frank well, Malone? Um, first, I'm the only person seeking the line in Congressional District Six that has any government experience. Secondly, my attachment to this district has been lifelong. Um, and thirdly, I am uh, an equivalent representative of the people that are going to be voting and the people that I'll be representing.